to the point with Congressman Bill Pascrell, focusing on the concerns and issues facing the families of New Jersey's 9th Congressional District. Hello, I'm Congressman Bill Pascrell, and I would like to welcome you to this latest edition of To The Point. With the potential ties between Trump administration officials and Russian agents, with nepotism occurring within President Trump's inner circle, and with a lack of transparency in the West Wing, the time is right for a discussion of ethics in the White House. There are many Americans wondering if the Trump family is profiting from their father's presidency, and ethics issues in the nation's capital have never been more pressing. That is why I've invited a former White House ethics czar, Norm Eisen, on the show today. He can give a guide to interpreting these troubling, potentially unethical times in American government. Norm is the former special counsel for the ethics and government reform to the White House under President Obama, and today is leading an effort to sue Trump over the emoluments clause, Article 1, Section 9. Norm has been studying ethics issues for almost his entire career. Graduated from Harvard University Law School the same year that President Obama and the newly appointed Supreme Court Justice, Neil Gorsuch. Aside from his work with ethics and government, Norm served as the ambassador to Czech Republic, one of my favorite countries, from 2011 to 2014. He is the co-founder and chair of the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, or as it's known, CRU, one of the foremost government watchdog organizations in Washington, D.C. Norm, thank you for so much for being here today. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Bill. And we're going to jump right into this. I got okay. a zillion questions to ask you. <laughs> Let me say this. You know, I've got, I brought my book, you know, there's a number of them that have come out over the last couple of years, Teapot Dome. The Sisters of Charity would pound this into my head and they said I was hopeless because I didn't remember too much in the seventh grade. Very important, probably the biggest, one of the biggest scandals of the 20th century and it happened during the Harding Coolidge administrations. Uh, and then it led, because of the scandal, it led to a change in the tax code of 1924. And jump in if I'm doing this incorrectly. And we put something uh, in section 6103 F1, and that was that some groups, some committees in the Congress would have the right to ask for somebody in the executive branch of government's tax return. That's what happened when Secretary of the Interior Fall, who served, came up with the brilliant idea that he was going to turn Army, a Navy Reserve oil, Navy Reserve oil, and uh, uh, Teapot Dome, Teapot Rock, uh, Wyoming. He decided we're going to privatize this, bring in his boys, <laughs> and make them part and cut up the pie that way. And uh, he was found guilty later on. Somebody murdered somebody else. That was a fascinating thing to read through. Every book I read, pick up new stuff when I read about the Teapot Dome scandal. Everybody should read that interesting about what we need what you need to know about a conflict of interest and what could happen etc 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 and i just was shocked last week last monday at uh, tuesday when i read that this president now our president donald trump decided that what he wants to do is take the monuments or the preserved land and put it up for development and it reminded me of the Teapot Dome. Am I stretching the truth here? What do you think, Don? No, you are not. What this administration has planned, unless they straighten things out, starting with President Trump himself, it's going to make the Teapot Dome look like the Teacup Dome scandal or like the... Thimble, like a thimble. So that's a, that's it's a, small a huge. One. It's a huge mess waiting to happen. In fact... The ethics crisis is already happening, Bill. When have you seen a new administration? Not even in, uh, it wasn't even 100 days in, and they already had a major scandal, the Russia investigation. Right. 
uh, looming over their heads. We've never seen. And we got anything. two committees and three committees, and we got the FBI investigating, et cetera. The et cetera. DOJ, the Department of Justice, yes. And we've never seen anything like the ethics problems and the lack of transparency in this administration. It starts with the president, because. And I uh, want to give you a plug right now. Thank you. Not I'll that take you it. need my plug, but I read through. I never turned down a plug. <laughs> I read through uh, what. The president, President Obama, committed to, and this is not a partisan show here. No, we've got Democrats on, Republicans on, et cetera, et cetera. But what came out the day after he was sworn in, the, the presidential documents, Executive Order One Three Four Nine O, January Twenty First, Two O O Nine, Ethics Commitments by the Executive Branch of Personnel, and I read through these because I know you were the author, basically. I read through the entire document, and I said, oh, my God, we, what we have here is a jewel. It, it, it's, it's a GPS through government, and how, what to do and what not to do. And on the very basis of the revolving door for people leaving the administration and becoming lobbyists, this is an ultimate disgrace what is happening now. Well, unfortunately, President Trump he hung, uh, he hung on to all of his businesses, so many conflicts, hundreds of businesses. He refused to turn over his tax returns. He broke a precedent there, Bill, that every other president, Democrat and Republican, like your show, bipartisan. Right. He broke that precedent. And then, to add insult to injury, he took this executive order, which I was privileged to um, assist President Obama with, and he gutted it. Yes. He took out the lobbying ban. He right. said he was going to drain the swamp, and then he took out the lobbying ban. So there are ban. some people that have joined the administration early on in January and are already out there lobbying. D Am I incorrect? They, they refused. We required everybody to sign this. He let some of these people didn't have right. to sign, including Flynn. Gee, when that's have, a shocker. When have you ever seen a national security advisor get out this Never. fast? And make no mistake about it, it's not just President Trump who has conflicts, these terrible conflicts, which violate the Constitution. That's what we're doing our litigation about. We'll talk about that. It's spread like, uh, to continue our teapot dome uh, analogy, like an oil slick. Yeah. It spread throughout the White House. It swept up Flynn, so many others, and throughout the administration, this unethical conduct. And a lot of it comes from gutting that executive order. They took out the lobbying ban. They took out many of the safeguards that made that work, that helped the Obama administration right. have relatively fewer scandals. And you know what else they took out? Because President Trump hates it. The transparency bill. We published. If somebody got a waiver, for example, under our order right. in Obama, we published it. We put it on right. the White House right. website. Now, Not I was now. the ethics czar. Not now. Do you think that was comfortable for we me? We don't even know who the heck is visiting That's the White right. House. That's right. He trashed the transparency, just like he won't turn over his tax returns. I've never seen a mess like this. It's no wonder there's already a Russia investigation. And let me tell you. These issues relate to the Russia investigation because Trump's son has said, we see a lot, before his dad was running for office, he wasn't as careful as he is now. He, says, right. he said, we see a lot of Russian money flowing into our businesses. And yet Trump won't give us his tax returns, no. which have the details, a lot of detail about foreign money. Maybe if we had those tax returns, we can understand President Trump's bizarre former embrace of Putin. Well, this money, is, this, follow the money. This is the point. So we changed the law in, in 1924. We changed the tax code to give three specific committees, Ways and Means, mm -hmm. Joint Committee on Taxation, and Senate Finance. They had the uh, authenticity and they had the law behind them if they wanted to investigate anybody in the executive branch of government. Am I right so far? You're right. The law is on our side. Plus the fact, Article 1, Section 9, gifts, emoluments, whatever you want to call them, from other parties, definitely banned because that puts you in a difficult position to make an objective viewpoint, whether it's foreign policy or domestic policy. Am I on the right track in pursuing this since February 1st of this year? 
You are, and first of all, I want to say uh, that uh, you have been a leader on these issues. And so I thank you, and I, I, I thank the American people thank you for pushing. The law allows uh, these tax returns to be produced at the demand of Congress. I don't know why Congress wouldn't want to take a look at them and just understand in the middle of a Russian investigation, I've, is Trump getting Russian money or not? His son says they are. I've been accused by my chairman, of, the, of, of who I have a great deal of respect for and get along with very well, Kevin Brady, of wanting to rummage through, quote unquote, people's private business. And I said to Kevin, Kevin, you, you guys had a vote three, four years ago to look at the 51 private returns from organizations <laughs> when you were going after Ms. Lerner over there in the IRS. Is that different? You went through 51 of these. I want to see the presidents, not simply because the precedent is there from Gerald Ford to now, but because the only way I find out about his 500 plus investments, investments all over the world, the only way I find out about his partnerships so that they're clean and that he can make objective decisions is if I have his, not only his two pages of the, you know, those, those two pages don't mean a damn thing. I want to see the backup schedules. Yes. I want to see the backup reports, who he does business with. What it went in 1995 when he had the, the uh, big loss that he took, $900 million. Mm -hmm. He was able to move it forward so that he didn't have to pay any taxes from then on. I mean, he didn't break the law. But I think everybody should pay their fair share of taxes. Well, we need to see these taxes. We want to evaluate for ourselves a series of questions, including how aggressive he was in his tax treatments, in his tax shelters, in claiming deductions. Every other president has done that with far fewer conflicts than him. Now, there is another way to get those tax returns. I hope Congress is going to do the right thing, and I'm happy to come up and chat with you and the chairman anytime you like about why it's so important. And it's bipartisan, because I work together with the Bush at the and I did that Professor for the, Painter. I, I made it bipartisan. It should be bipartisan. February 1st, this is not Democrat or Republican. I said to Kevin, let's do it together. I said, because it's going to be very embarrassing. I'm going to make sure that there are votes on the floor. I've done that. I'm going to make sure there's votes in the House, in the uh, Ways and Means Committee. And other committees are moving and doing as I'm doing to put it on the floor. Pr a proposal for inquiry. So we have the right to do that. They have to bring it up within a certain amount of time. And I want them on record. Now, they're saying... Don't uh, stop. They're Keep going. <laughs> they're 80 percent of the American people want to see these tax returns. They, they say that in public. I, in fact, I asked one in a committee hearing who I know would tell the truth and said, yes, I believe he should, but he wouldn't vote with us. So I understand that. But if I could get them even to say at a public meeting, uh, a town meeting, if I could get them to say it to their local newspaper, that means in the, in the conglomerate, that means more pressure on them. Not that the president is going to listen to any of this. Well, there is another, you got to keep it up because a majority, a super majority of Americans in poll after poll, somewhere between 75 and 80 percent want to see, and that right. includes most of Mr. Trump's own voters. So keep it up. But there are other vehicles uh, to do this as well. One of the reasons that uh, my group, crew, my watchdog group, filed the lawsuit alleging that the president was violating the Constitution uh, was because we're so concerned about the combination of these unconstitutional foreign government uh, payments and the secrecy that has gone on. You mm -hmm. know, as you point out, the Constitution says a president cannot accept presents cash or benefits very clear very clear not now, only the president yes members you're of right. the executive branch federal of government. officials you're right. right and you know what's so interesting bill the founders of our country and the framers of our constitution were so worried and you hit the nail right on the head a president's judgment or any other federal official could be distorted if they got these foreign government right. payments that they didn't put in any test. It's not like a bribe. You got to show a quid pro quo. It's a flat out prohibition that a president cannot accept these payments. And Donald Trump is all over the United States and all over the world. You know, you can see it happening from the steps of the White House in his hotel on Pennsylvania right. Avenue. Foreign, foreign government That's after right. foreign government is doing business with that hotel. You know, the thing that 
pushed me over the top to begin this in February 1st was the fact that he never divested himself of his businesses. The present czar of ethics in the government now, Mr. Schwab, he told him to do it. He said this is the right thing to do, but they did not do that. The fact that he didn't divest means he's just as much as in business now as he is the president of the United States. We've never had that before, and we shouldn't have it right now. We have to get those tax returns. Well, uh, the American people are behind you, and I'm behind you. And by the way, in addition to what you're doing, our lawsuit will also serve um, to uh, require the production of these tax returns in the discovery phase. You know, first right. you argue about the law, then if the court says yes, go ahead. Right. You can seek discovery, you, you can get cause. information. And, you have to have cause. and in this case, the cause is in order to establish these questions right. about the foreign business, we're going to want to see the tax returns. So I think between your efforts, the litigation that's happening, the investigation uh, that's going on of the Russia ties, and just the day-to-day -day business that Mr. Trump is doing. I'm going to tell you something that's very interesting, by the way, because we've just amended our lawsuit to add uh, plaintiffs who represent restaurants and hotels, competitors with Mr. Trump. When we filed our suit, our watchdog was the plaintiff in the suit. People right. said, well, can a watchdog really sue? Now, I think we can. Yeah. Just this week, the Supreme Court uh, cited very favorably a case that we rely on. But if you had any question, those questions have been put to rest. Now we have restaurants and hotel-related plaintiffs. However, there's another very interesting aspect of this lawsuit. We've brought it out. You know, it's not just foreign government payments. Mr. Trump has spent a third of his presidency, a third of the days of his presidency, he's visited one of his own properties. And that is generating a lot of cash and benefits for him from the federal government and the state governments. And in Article 2, the framers of the Constitution said you can't do that either. It applies to the president. It's called the Domestic Emoluments Clause. Right. Emoluments, just a fancy 18th century word for cash and benefits. And uh, they forbade the president from doing just what Donald Trump is doing. He's using the presidency a third of the day's bill. He's using the presidency as a giant infomercial for his properties. What? He's raking in the cash and benefits. We're going to put a stop to it with our litigation. I hope you're right. And members of his family. Now, when we were negotiating on some things with China, all of a sudden China decides to okay the trademarks for his daughter. And, you know, our daughter's a hardworking person, and, you know, you got to love her. But the fact of the matter is, you are part of the White House. You're part of the family. And how did you get those trademarks so quickly when you were waiting so long? Now your father's the president. And you may say, well, you're jealous because you didn't get a trademark. Well, I never applied for a trademark. But the point of the Please matter— Please don't. Well, the, point, the point of the matter is that this is very suspect. We will never get to conflicts of interest in whether a person is acting objectively if we can look at those tax People returns. are very concerned about the jobs uh, that have flowed out of the United States to other countries, including China, for many years. How can we trust Donald Trump and his family to stanch the flow uh, of those jobs, the flow of wealth to China, if they're getting these enormous gifts? That you're, and and you're, you, the, the, the stinkiest one, Donald Trump himself for years, Bill, he litigated to get his, his name trademarked in China, one trademark he wanted, and he was refused. Of course, all run by the Communist Party to a greater or lesser degree. He, he was refused. He gets on the threshold of the Oval Office and he says, I'm going to reverse our China policy. I'm going to go back to a Taiwan policy. They give him the trademark that he wanted all these years, and he says, okay, I'll go back to one China. And then while his daughter was sitting, having dinner with President Xi and her father, she gets three trademarks. Yeah. I mean, it's open season. I, that, that's not the American style of doing business. The Chinese- Not for a president that's gone and, become, and, and has shown himself to be a quote unquote populist, that he's going to do things for the people that the establishment did not do. Well, all the while, when he was part of the establishment, it didn't matter. The fact of the matter is, 
He has turned on them. He's turned their backs, his backs on him. And this has nothing to do with Democrat and Republican. And you see the votes that are happening in, in, the, in the legislature today. Because people are going to watch this over a couple of weeks. They're going to be able to go back to look at it and get a chance to look at it again. The point of the matter is you'll see that this is not coming down as the Democrats versus the Republicans. There's all kinds of divisions here. What we want to do is bring people together. We want to come to some agreements. But the president has to show some universality. He has to say, I need the Democrats, I need the Republicans. I need the left on the Democratic side. I need the right on the Democratic side and vice versa with the Republican Party. Well, look at that. We were able to avert the government shutdown and right. to get a spending package because we worked together. Now, Mr. Trump's upset because uh, the Democrats got something, too. He's sending out angry tweets. But that's the way it should be in Washington. Let both sides succeed. But the problem with this uh, uh, situation of his... Uh, cash and benefits uh, that he's getting and his presence that he's getting from China and the other countries, it runs contrary to his slogan, drain the swamp. Yeah. I think he must have misspoken. Yes. He must have meant to say, I will drown the swamp with emoluments, because that's what's happening. Well, don't forget, Washington, D.C. is built on swampland, is it not? <laughs> <laughs> it is so darn humid down here in the summertime. And he was going to drain all of this. He was going to get rid of the corruption. You know, eight years, Obama, for all of his warts and his faults. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect at all. No one. None of us are. The point is that it was a clean eight years. When you go over it with a fine magnifying glass. Why is that important? Not only sets an example, but the person there, you may not like his policies, but, if the pilot, but what he's doing is transparent. We can see it, that he's not making a buck on a side or setting it up so he can make a buck later on. That's important to the American people also. Well, I think that the uh, example that was set uh, uh, for the Obama administration was a good one. And I had hopes. You know, it's been publicly reported. I'll say it on your show. I went and talked to the... Trump uh, transition when it was being run by Governor Christie, I said, uh, you know, we're Americans first. I don't agree with the policies right, right. of the president-elect, but let me help you run the government. What in was the non response? I gave them a, a, an even better version of that document. They listened, and then Christie was thrown out. That was the end, and the uh, Trump kleptocracy took over, and we've seen now a hundred days, my watchdog group has issued a report, more than a hundred scandals in a uh, hundred days. It's you know, unbelievable. Uh, Congressman Sarbanes, uh, Sarbanes of Maryland has put yes. together a document along with oversight, uh, and a beautiful document that goes into each of these specifics. When you examine those 560 investments all over the world, and the history of them is mind-boggling as to who he was dealing with, who his company was dealing with. Yes. And not to divest yourself from any of this is very suspect. Well, we talked about the, the fact that it's against the Constitution, it's wrong, and it stinks, these, the cash and benefits he's getting. But uh, it also hurts Americans because we can't trust the president that he's going to do the best for us, save our jobs, for example, when he's negotiating with China, if China's giving right. him this valuable stuff. On foreign policy, it hurts, too, because look at Duterte. Yeah. He calls Duterte up. Philippines. He says, I need, to, I need to have you come to the United States because of North Korea. I need your help in North Korea. Well, the Philippines has never helped us with North Korea. That has nothing to do with North Korea. Is it a coincidence that there is a Trump Tower in downtown Manila? No coincidence. So when you provide this bogus explanation, one can only assume, oh, he's doing it for the sake of his business. And it's the same with all of these, these uh, tyrants. Turkey. He he's, has an attraction to tyrants. <laughs> well, he's... Why does our president have a, an attraction to Duarte? Why? It's easy to build in uh, those countries because there's not a lot of uh, due process, right? right? You, if the tyrant says, yes, build the Trump Tower, it gets built. Turkey, same thing. He's built. He's got a property in Turkey. Could we force him to divest be, but the president of the United States, our president? Could we force him to divest before he gives us his tax returns? 
Well, our, our uh, legal action is seeking to force him to divest. That's the remedy in the legal action. And what does action. that exactly mean to our the, listening the audience? The court will the say, audience. if we're successful, it'll come after discovery, after right. we've established the evidence. The court will say, uh, President Trump, as the courts have done with the Muslim ban, they That's said right. the same thing, with the sanctuary cities. He's had a losing streak in the courts. The courts are just as powerful as the president. We have Checks three, and balance system. We have three uh, parts of our government. We have your part, the legislature. We have the courts, the president, co-equal branches. That's correct. Just as powerful. And the judge, we're going to ask the judge to say to him, Mr. President, you got to get rid of your emoluments. No more cash from foreign governments, no more benefits, no more presents. You can't do that. You can't be shaking down the federal government to support a third of your time in your own properties. You can't do it with the states either. No government money because it distorts your judgment. Cornelius Vanderbilt, one of the great people in American history, uh, said very, very clearly, what do you mean the law? I have the power. <laughs> and you know what? That's very dangerous in a democracy. We need to renew that democracy every day for our kids, That's let it. alone ourselves, That's and it. our grandkids. And I keep that in mind. That's why I'm here, to do my job. And they're not going to scare me. They're not going to threaten me. I'm going to do what I have to do. And when it's time for me to be Retire, I'll retire in another 20 years. Don't retire. So the, <laughs> we need so, you, Bill. So the fact of the matter is, if it weren't for you and a lot of folks like you, uh, God, where would this republic be? Thank you, Norm Eisen, for doing what you're doing. I'm very serious about <laughs> Thank this. You. Thank you. Because we need the, the, I'm not a lawyer. We need the legal wherewithal in order to support what we're doing here. And I really appreciate what you're doing and coming on the show and talking about it. We are humbled by your presence. I'm, I'm honored, and right back at you, I work with a lot of people. You are a fighter, and I'm pleased to fight <laughs> I'm off the shoulder streets of Patterson, shoulder. New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Look, thank you for watching this edition of To The Point. I want to thank my guest, uh, Norm Eisen. We need more time for joining us today. You've heard our thoughts, and now I would like to hear from you. What you think about today's show. If you have any comments or concerns or questions, you know, just uh, here's our address and phone number and website address, and, uh, and uh, that'll appear in a moment. I want to thank you again for tuning in to, to, to The Point, and we're going to see you next time. God bless and take care. People. Stereotyping is wrong, and it hurts all of us. Stop stereotyping. A message from your American Muslim neighbors. After leaving the military, some veterans may face homelessness, but they aren't alone in the battle. Thanks to a simple phone call, they can get help from a trained professional at VA. If you know of or are a veteran in need, call 877-424-3838.